Hi guys, salut, c'est Daniel. This is what we're going to do now. I guess we'll make use of the mirror node, even though the parts symmetrical uh, to the horizontal axis are not exactly equivalent. But it's okay to simplify the exercise a bit. Okay, we'll stay within this graph. We could start with a linear curve. Okay, we have the basis. Let's plug that into the sample image slot. Right now, no need of a scale map. Okay, let's move on. I need a blend node. And we can proceed with outlining the picture. As you can imagine, making this kind of ornament may be easier and probably quicker in a 3D molding application. How many prints do I have? Seven. Okay, I need at least five more. It's still important to know how to do as much as possible directly in Substance Designer. Because once it's done, it's easier and quicker to modify directly your texture with this software and send it to your rendering engine. No baking, short pipeline. It's efficient. You can also reuse easily anything you've done in the past. So I like to stay as much as possible within the Substance ecosystem. With the points here, it's a very visual process, very easy. Let's send this through a mirror, as it's not a real symmetry, we ought to cheat a little. What would be interesting to get now is this little puffiness here. It just can be a circle. This way it's quick, clean. We can always smooth this shape a bit more. For this part, we can try to use the swirl node. It's not necessarily the best option in this case, but I'd like to show it to you anyway. Not everyone knows about this node. For the leaves, and those little details will use the curve sampler and mapper. It needs a shape in entry, so we can just make a rectangle, and this is how it works. Very easy. Maybe with a slight blur, we can have some anti aliasing. I just place it now. A horizontal mirror should do the trick. By scaling it down, we can get closer to what we want. Then, by playing with the cropping area of the blend node, we can delete most of what we don't want. That won't be enough, though. I still have to subtract an additional shape. I like this blurry effect. Then, with a histogram scan, I can have a sharper contour. It's not exact with the swirl, but we can be close enough. That would be alright for our little exercise. But before we mask the part we don't need, we could come and position it correctly on the main stem. Okay, now maybe with a skew and this one. It would already be done should I have used the normal technique with the curve sampler, like we did in the beginning, but this wheel node has its utility in some cases. That's just one more tool in our bag. It's not perfect, but we can cheat once again with the blur and the scan. Even if it's not good practice in terms of graph optimization, but that's alright, it's a very small exercise, so no problem. A couple blur plus histogram scan is going to clean the shape for us. Now we need to duplicate our additional spiral and put it there. And do the same previous steps again to integrate it as smoothly as possible to the design.
Nice. The leaves, I found a good way of doing them after the recording. So I'll put the leaf part at the end. So for now, let's study how to make the mini branches here. I don't know if they are branches, but you see what I mean. In this case, we'll use the curve sampler. I want the end or the start to be round, like the sample image. It's going to be important to find the right scale curve and the right way to scale this sample image. When you need to find out what's happening, just check the sample's number. You can break it down and you'll know what's going on. Let's scale down the V-axis and voila! We find back the round shape. Increasing the number of samples gets you a more fluid shape. Now I'm trying to find the right way to define the form that we need. I'm in a curve node, just trying to find the right curve to drive the shape. I guess I messed up once again the sample image ratio. It's flattened. The V scale is the solution here. We are getting closer and closer to what we want. I hope you are getting familiar with the curve sampler node and its interactions with the scale curve and the linear curve that draws the line and the sample image that feeds the line. At last, I'm getting something that I like, very close to the original design. This is why I love doing simple exercises like this. It really helps to get to know more the tools that are useful in complex projects. Now I just place the details on the rest of the model. The transform nodes, based on the same elements, will do the work just fine. The second one here is less thin. Okay, good. So please don't mind the leaves right now. I really didn't like what I did before. So now let's see how to make good leaves with the waveform and the curve mapper. And we'll be finished with this MIDI project. In this case, the curve mapper will bring a sense of movement and direction to the leaf. And the leaf design will be brought by the waveform node. So no noise, wave number one, pattern two, now let's send it to the texture plug and it's just a matter of finding the right settings in the curve mapper. Let's bring the width up and play with the tiling. We just need one leaf that will suffice. We can delete uh, what we don't need at the end. We now have four points that can drive the leaf movement, so that's good enough. You see it's pretty quick to do. Um, three nodes and we get a moving leaf. Well, 
almost a moving leaf. You get more control with that than with a directional warp, for example. So this new leaf is going to replace the previous bad ones. I can delete a lot of nodes and clean up the graph a bit. Let's position the leaf correctly, accordingly to the original design. I just need to conform the contour a bit more to the design, nothing major, it's simple. One last leaf to place, okay. That's it for the leaves, they're done now. So everything's done, we're good. We saw different techniques in this video. Okay, these two I can delete. Nice. I'm happy with the graph complexity, which is contained. You can still organize it a bit better, place a few frames and commands. And also note that uh, without the swirl nodes, it would have been even lighter. This video is finished, so is this tutorial about the curve drawing system. I think you know enough to use it. The cost of the, the curve drawing system is only $10, so personally I think it's a reasonable price. Uh, don't hesitate to um, to go see Ilya Kuzmichev's uh, art station and uh, his Gumroad page to know more about uh, this project. Uh, the link uh, to get it on Gumroad is in um, the description. As always, if you have questions or suggestions for a new video, please share them in the comments section. I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. Bye.